Hi, my name is Kristen and this is Kristen Craze Books. So before we get into all of the books coming out in December that I'm excited about, I just wanted to acknowledge that I did reach 1,000 subscribers and that is something I didn't dream of when I started this channel. I just wanted to connect with fellow booktubers and members of the book community in a different way because I've been blogging. I have a bookstagram account. I figured why not go to video content as well. And I just didn't think I'd fall in love with it as much as I have. I've really fallen in love with making YouTube videos, especially the last couple of months. I feel like I'm just getting into the groove of things and what works for me and getting way more comfortable in front of the camera. And a lot of that is thanks to all of you, knowing that you're actually watching and commenting and we're interacting it just means so much to me. So I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you again. And when it comes to December releases, I wasn't going to do this at first, but then I was looking through and there are quite a few books I want to highlight and put on your radar. Not nearly as much as throughout the rest of the year, but there actually are some coming out in December that I thought were interesting. That I think is kind of interesting when a book comes out in December because people are kind of busy this time of year. They might not be paying attention as much, so I do want to put these on your radar and the first one December 6th is when most of these come out makes sense in time for the holidays and the first one is one that I actually have an e-arc of and I am making my way through now and this is A Dash of Salt and Pepper by Kasoko Jackson and this is really 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 fun and you know that I like foodie romances. I feel like this comes up in every video because other people have jumped on board foodie romances it's like a thing now so I feel like I always have ones to recommend but here's the December one, and it just is so freaking fun. Our main character, I would recommend reading a sample of this. You can read a sample on Goodreads or on Amazon because I think our main character might be too much for some people. He is very negative and sarcastic and ha makes a lot of like pop culture references, but I really like him and I can relate to him and I think he's fun to read from. But you're in his head, he's kind of talking to you and it's just... If you don't connect with him in the first chapter, I wouldn't continue with it because I think he can be overwhelming. But he is one of these guys who always had his life planned for him. He was very career oriented. He had all these goals he wanted to set. And he thought he'd be at a certain place at this point in his life and he was there, but then it all came crashing down around him. He lost his job, his boyfriend broke up with him and he has to go back to his small town. And this is a trope. I realize that I love and I know it's cliche but it works for me where somebody has to go back to this small town that they ran away from and there are reasons he hates a small town and they're all very valid and then but the way he talks about the town is quite funny and he's just kind of a sarcastic funny character and I'm at the point of the book where he just met obviously he was going to be the love interest and his love interest in this is a chef he owns a restaurant he needs help he did him and our main character do not get along at first at all they're so different in personality but he's kind of desperate for help and our main character doesn't even want to take this job because he doesn't want to be in his town for long but you know sparks are going to fly it's going to be so cute and actually i think there's a cheesy line in the synopsis at the end i wanted to read to you it says stuck between a stove and a hot place hilarious logan and xavier discover an unexpected connection but when the heat between them threatens to top the scoville scales they'll have to decide if they can make the relationship work or if life has seasoned them too differently so that's just so sweet and yeah I'm having a lot of fun with that. I'm like not prioritizing it as much because I want to get my Once Upon a Readathon books done and I'm sneaking in some holiday romances here and there but I do want to finish that one up because it's Xavier's a fun character. And then the next one coming out on December 6th is The Ingenue by Rachel Kalpuk Dale who wrote The Ballerinas. Now this is a book that is very hit or miss for people. It gets very mixed reactions but I think the marketing failed that one. The Ballerinas is obviously about ballet but it's compared to Black Swan and it is so not Black Swan. That is not a thriller. That is like a commentary on how women are treated in ballet really. And it's the journey of one particular woman discovering how she was treated. So yes, anyways, I've been on rants about that book before. I love that book, but the marketing's wrong. So I'm excited about having a, another book from Rachel Kalpuk Dale. And you might hear my cat in the background. She um, likes to catch her balls and then cry like she caught a mouse and bring them to me so if you hear her I apologize but we'll just keep going with this 
And so this makes me nervous about the Ingenue because it's compared to my dark Vanessa and the Queen's Gambit and those are bold claims and the mismarketing of the first book. I think I'm just going to go into this one knowing what I know from the ballerinas and expect that and I will like this. So our main character in here is like a piano prod prodigy and I think her mother dies and she thinks that she is going to inherit the home but it is left to somebody from her past that I think it's next boyfriend is when I'm getting from the synopsis and then all her secrets from her past and things that she's been avoiding become revealed so we'll see how that goes and it says set against a post me too landscape the ingenue delves into a mother-daughter relationship the expectations of talent the stories we tell ourselves and what happens when the things that once made you special are taken from you and I always think that that about your whole life dedicating to being dedicated to something you're so good at and what happens when that's stripped from you and your whole identity is gone and I do like books that explore mother-daughter relationships so I have high hopes for that one and then I always put Mar Mara Rutherford's books on my TBR because they sound so good the covers are gorgeous and I never get to them they're on Kindle Unlimited I have one downloaded right now I just need to do it because I know I'm gonna like them and this one in particular sounds really good this is the poison season and it says outsiders are always given a choice the forest or the lake either way they're never heard from again so I think that that can be really fun I like the idea of like an enchanted forest and I'm just gonna have to tell this cat to be quiet one second okay here she is I just wanted to show you the culprit because she is adorable she is just wild and obviously she does not like to be held too much but here's proof of life she is fine she's just chasing balls right now so hopefully she calms down a little bit so where was I now I've misplaced my notes one second so yes back to the poison season yeah just a gorgeous cover love the idea of the atmosphere in this one i've heard good things about all of her writing so if you're a huge fan of uh, mara rutherford get excited about that i think it's interesting that that's coming out in december on december 6th so this next one is actually a re-release of a author's debut and that is s.a cosby who wrote uh, razor blade tears one of my favorite thrillers ever and he also wrote blacktop wasteland which is one i have to read and this is his debut my darkest prayer so i think it's awesome that they were re-releasing this trying to get it some new attention. I don't know if releasing it in December is the best idea for that, but here we are and I hope that it gets the attention that it deserves because I love S.A. Cosby and I will be picking this up. And it says, I handle the bodies. Whether it's working at his cousin's funeral home or tossing around the local riffraff at his favorite bar, Nathan Waymaker is a man who knows how to handle the bodies. A former Marine and Sheriff's deputy, Nathan has built a reputation in his small southern town as a man who can help when all other avenues have been exhausted. When a beloved local minister is found dead, his parishioners ask Nathan to make sure the death isn't swept under the rug. So I think that could be really good. S.A. Cosby has this way of creating really memorable characters that really get under your skin and you just root for them. And so I think we're all going to love Nathan. Then this next one just looks like an interesting one. I know that Leah Lewis had a book a couple of years ago that was pretty popular, Eight Perfect Hours. This one is The Key to My Heart. And again, this is about somebody who plays the piano. So I don't know that I've ever put a book on here or read a book about people that play the piano, but I have two this month. So that is interesting. And this sounds like it's going to deal with grief. Our main character thinks she has a perfect life. Then her husband unexpectedly, unexpectedly dies and we follow her a few years later and she's just not in a good place. And the only thing that brings her joy is playing the piano. Like I think it's underneath the subway somewhere where she can be anonymous and just play music. And then suddenly she music keeps coming up and it's all of her husband's favorite songs like somebody's putting sheet music on this piano and it's all of her fa her husband's favorite songs so I don't know how, where it goes from there but I do like books that tackle grief and the piano part is interesting to me and then December 13th this is the one that made me realize I really have to make this video because I've been excited about this book for months it feels like and this is a million to one by uh, Adaba Jagadar who is a very popular YA author still need to read something by her and I think this will be it because all you need to know about this this is a sapphic romance, it's a high story, and it's set on the Titanic. So what else do you need to know? And that this is a really beloved author. So I think it's going to be really good. And I've been seeing some people reading eARCs and getting hyped about it already. So that is one that's really exciting. And then actually I have an arc of this, but I'll just put up a photo. It's A Death in Tokyo by Keigo Higashino. And this is a crime novel that's 
was written in Japanese and has been translated into English. I think this is like the eighth book in the series, but obviously you can read them as standalones and it's just like your typical detective novel. I'm sure that this is a really beloved character. I'm trying to figure out what I like in like thrillers and crime and mysteries. So I'm excited to try this one because there's a lot of Japanese translated fiction that I do really love, but I've never read like a crime thriller. So we'll see what I think about that one. Then there's a couple more here. The Lost Witch, another one I have an arc of. And this follows a woman in two timelines, I think in 1922 and 2022. So it's her doing something to save her daughter in 1922 and then facing the consequences of that in present day. So I think that could be interesting as well. And then the one that I'm super excited about, I've never read like a Highlander romance, but this one I think is gonna change that for me. And this is Never Cross That Highlander by Lisa Rain. And this cover is so good. And it's like, what is this even about? I don't even know, I just saw the cover and I thought it looked like a good time. So this is the first book in a series. And yeah, so here we go. Uh, this is Asa Connery has waited three young, long years to finally escape her enslavement at Stirling Castle and reunite with her clan. But her carefully laid plans are completely destroyed by the arrival of the infamous Highland warrior known as Dab Mahun, the Black Devil, who has plans of his own. Callum McNeil's fearsome reputation has long allowed him to keep hidden his secret double life of freeing enslaved captives across the land. It's only when he kidnaps a servant lass, quite by accident, that he finds himself facing a wee predicament. He must accompany the lass home or risk her exposing her tr his true identity. It'd be easy enough if the feisty Helen didn't fight him at every turn. So we're gonna have like hate to love here, some bickering. Sounds like it's gonna be fun. Just something about it caught my eye. And I've been meaning to try a Highlander romance. I've heard good things about this one already. I've read some reviews and I know some people were excited about this. I think I heard about this a couple of months ago on somebody's channel and they were excited. So looking forward to that. And then there's a few sequels coming out to things I haven't read, but I just want to put them on your radar. Um, this Cursed Crowns by Alexandra Overy. That is the sequel to These Feathered Flames, I think the first book's called. So if you like that one, this one comes out in December. A Hard Day for a Hangover by Dorinda Jones. That's part of that whole series that I know a lot of people love. It's like a cozy mystery series. So that's out. And A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross, the sequel to A River Enchanted, which I think came out this year. So I find a lot of we're getting a lot of sequels within the same year, which is kind of fun. So I love that we don't have to wait as long as we used to. So those are all the books coming out in December that I'm excited about. I know there are others that I've missed. So let me know about them in the comments below. Tell me what you're excited to read. Can't believe this is my last most anticipated books of the year video for 2022. I have so many for 2023. I'm thinking of breaking them down into 2023 romances, YA, sequels, because I'm just overwhelmed. I think my Goodreads shelf is at 150 books right now, so we'll see what I decide to do with that. But thanks for your support. As always, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.